someone to, to guard the Musaheen. You know, actually in our countries, we have the Mukabda. You know, the Mukabda makes sure that people, you know, follow the order correctly because sometimes the voice of the Imam is not that clear and some of them get confused. Anyway, in actions, the Muslim, the followers, should follow the Imam, after the Imam. But in words, for example, reciting the Dua or the, you know, the Tasbihat, um, it is not necessary to be, you know, behind the Imam. But the actions, like going to the Imam, Anyway, inshallah, my topic tomorrow will be about the faith. Inshallah. Salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyina wa habibi khulubina. Abil Qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. This salawat is for those who want to go to hibernate. They want to sleep completely. So instead of giving a lecture, we will do a melody for you guys. So, you know, we're going to sleep it. So this kind of salawat is not. I want a big one that wakes up everyone. Allah! In continuation with what we stopped, Yesterday, regarding the ahkam of the fasting, we talked about the conditions that notify the fasting treatment. And we said that there are 10 things. We talked about the eating and drinking, and tomorrow, tonight we will continue with the rest. Number three, it is the intercourse. Intercourse notifies the fasting on both sides. As well as what, what was before, before this ayah that came, that specifically talks about the ahkam of fasting, it used to be for the entire month of Ramadan, intercourse was haram, was forbidden. Also, eating and drinking was only allowed from mother, people will break their fasting, until they go to sleep. You know, would end up having long nights. So when people would sleep, once they sleep, then eating would become haram for them. That was the hukm prior to this ayah. Now what happens, one of the peasants, you know, Medina is full of farmers because they used to live on the palm days, on agriculture. One of the farmers who came late home, and was, you know, after dusk, he got back home, and his wife started to prepare the food. While she was preparing the food, he fell asleep. And he slept until, you know, next day. When, we, when he woke up, he could not eat anymore. And he was about to faint when he went to the Prophet his paper. I told him, now, so I am a farmer. I am already weak and tired and thirsty. I came back home last night. And while my wife was preparing the food, I felt asleep. And this causes hardship and difficulty for me. Therefore, this ayah came to do a few things. First of all, at night, the intercourse becomes lawful, as well as eating and drinking. In the other ayah says, we talked about that in the first night. So, those are the three things. Number four is istirna, which, is, which should be deliberate. If it's deliberate, then also it will invalidate the fasting. Number five, lying on behalf of God, the Prophet, and the Masuri. Anyone who deliberately lies, he knows that this is not a truth. The Prophet did not say sit such and such. Then he comes and says that Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his fasting becomes, you know, nullified. That's why 
it is recommended if you are about to narrate a narration from the Prophet, you can say Ruya Rasulullah. It has been narrated from the Prophet's peace be upon him. You don't say for I'm sorry, you don't say for sure that the Prophet has said this. Ruya Rasulullah at that time it will be it becomes okay. The Prophet peace be upon him have insisted, emphasized on transferring his narrations, his tradition to other people. You see, the tradition of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is source of ahkam of regulation, plus it is enlightenment. The Prophet, peace be upon him, in one hadith says, Nadallahum li'an sami'a maqalati fawa'aha wa addaha kama sami'aha. The Prophet wants, wants us to you know, to disclose the tradition, but we have to be precise. Why do we have to be precise? He says, he says, May Allah bless the soul of someone who listens to my tradition and say it, disclose it exactly in the same way that he has heard. Why? You see, the words of the prophets are very profound in meaning. Sometimes I hear the word, I myself have certain understanding due to my shallow knowledge, limited knowledge. But the Madja, the Fatih, when he listens to the Hadith, he extracts more and more you know, meaning from that tradition. Therefore, the Prophet says, you may take my words, but you have limited understanding, but say it exactly the way that you heard it, so someone else who is more knowledgeable than you can deduct more knowledge and information from that hadith. Anyway, that was number five. Number six, brothers and sisters, is reaching the thick dust to the throat. Listen to this. This problem Many of our sisters, you know, have this problem. And I tell you where. We, this issue has a three things. The dust that is said. <clears throat> we have smoke. We have a steam of water. Are you with me? We have a smoke. We have steam of water and we have dust. Each one of them has different purposes. Now the scholars they differ based on this. They are, you know, they have different views. But I have brought, you know, I've collected them in, in one bunch so you can understand them based on their categories. Smoke is the gaseous state of solids when they get burned or liquids when they get burned. Like the smoke of the cigarette. When the oil burns or the wood burns. That causes the smoke. Number two, the steam. The steam is the gaseous state of liquids when they boil. When they boil, they form the steam. And dust is the small particles in the air, the airborne particles. Like sand, like a flower. If you grab flour and throw it in the air, it all becomes this dust. Now, based on categories, we go with the smaller to the bigger. The smoke, the steam, and dust. Now, any of those, if it's considered to be heavy, meaning too much that becomes invisible through, you cannot see the other side through. This is considered to be heavy. If this sort gets to the throat, it invalidates the fasting. If deliberately done. If it's deliberately done, it will invalidate the fasting. But if it's little bit, the ulama say the dust. The dust will cause this. Ayatollah Sistani says that the steam, the steam of the pot, you know, when you open the pot, this steam will not hurt the fasting. But other malajah say also you have to avoid, especially the sisters. And you know, fortunately for the brothers, they sit at home. They don't even know where the kitchen is. Is that right? So when the sisters cook, they try to avoid the steam of the pot. But according to Ayatollah Sani, 
says that even this one is okay. Now, what about perfume or bukhur? You know what bukhur is. Bukhur and perfume are okay. There is no problem with them. You can use them. So that was number six. Number seven, submerging the head in the water. The only exception, again, is Ayatollah Sistani. He says it is highly unrecommended. It does not invalidate the fasting if you are the follower of Ayatollah Sistani. But other Mahajir say it will invalidate the fasting. Based on this, you know, we have two kinds of ghusl. One ghusl is a TV that you do the head, the neck, the right part, and then the left part. And the second type of ghusl is a timasi, where you jump in the water. Those ma'ajah that say that submerging the head will invalidate the fasting. Based on this, you cannot do ghusl as a timasi during the month of Ramadan, meaning during the fasting time. But again, Ayatollah Sistani said it says it does not invalidate the fasting. So those were number seven. Number eight, liquid suppository. You know, those who have constipation, they use the suppository. It has to be liquid. That also will invalidate the fasting. Number nine, deliberate vomiting. If someone wants to vomit by himself or herself, okay? If you do it deliberately, you will invalidate your fasting as well. But if it comes naturally, spontaneously, it's not up to you, all of a sudden you, you felt sick and then you start to throw up, that is okay. It would not invalidate your fasting. Uh, number 10, the last one, is staying on Janaba and Hayr and Nifas deliberately. Meaning, you're done, for example, for the Hayr and Nifas, the lady's clean, she has to go and take a shower, but she doesn't. Or the man, for example, Juno, but he doesn't take the ghusl. Now, staying during the month of Ramadan, staying on Janabah deliberately till dawn will invalidate the fasting. Now, there are a few scenarios, let me tell you briefly. Someone goes to sleep, and he's Juno, he goes to sleep. If by himself, within himself, he doesn't want to get up before dawn to take a shower. His fasting is nullified. You know, it has been violated. If he knows for sure, or he decides not to get up. Second, if he's in doubt that he want to get up or not. So, okay, let me sleep and then I will, later on I will decide what to do. Whether I take a shower. That one also will invalidate is fasting. Number three, someone who sleeps but knows for sure if he sleeps he will not get up. His fasting is also nullified. You cannot sleep. If you are gonna, you know that you won't get up for dawn, you have to stay, wake up. This is not only for dinner, even for Salat al-Subah, for Salat al-Fajr. Brothers and sisters, Salat al-Fajr is equal to Salat al Quhr and Asr. There is no difference between them. If you miss Salat al-Fajr, as if you have missed any other prayer. Unfortunately, many of us take Salat al-Fajr very lightly. We don't get up. If you are sure that when you sleep, you don't get up for Salat al-Fajr, you cannot sleep. And if you slept, there is a wrongdoing has been recorded for you. It is narrated in the hadith. This is the duty of the couples. You want to try it? Try it, but don't hold me responsible. It is said that if the wife or the husband, you know, your spouse, does not get up for dawn, a grab a cup of water and pour it on his head or pour it on her head. Please try it tonight. Okay. But tell me prior so I don't show up. So, this is number one. Number two, if he decides to get up, but he slept and he didn't get up, he's fine. Once he gets up, he takes a shower and he's okay. But if he slept, got up and slept again, at that time his fasting is notified that there is no kafar, meaning there is no penalty. That's 60 days he has to be fasting. Only one day after Ramadan he will make up for it. But if he slept, woke up, slept, and woke up again, and then slept. Meaning three times, you slept and woke up, slept and woke up, 
and he did not get up for the for the dawn, he has to you know to do the penalty, 60 days of fasting, as well as that his fasting has been nullified and he has committed something haram. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 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 Sallallahu alayhi wa sall